Today, we celebrate the epiphany of, uh, of the Lord. Now, epiphany really means, you know, like to be lit up. And, and it's where Jesus's divinity shines forth, um, maybe not more than his humanity, but in, with, and through it, he is divine. Um, he is God. Now, the important thing with Epiphany is the recognition of Jesus as the one who is prophesied, the one who is the one to come, who is greater than even John to tie his the thongs of his sandals. He's the Christ. He is the savior of the world. And it is in, with, and through Jesus Christ, savior, that we, those who are, us who are Gentiles and not Jewish by birth, who are then God's holy people, regardless, the Jews are still God's chosen people. They don't have to accept Jesus to be God's chosen people. We need to accept Jesus as the Christ, at, which it just means the anointed, right? But that he is God incarnate. We have to recognize that as anybody that's not a Jew to be grafted in to become co-heirs to the promise of the people of Israel. You see, we don't stand apart from the Jews. Anyone who accepts Christ and calls themselves Christian, we're not separated from the Jews at all. We are grafted in. We're a new branch into the root of Jesse. We're, we're made part of the greater promise that God made to his people, Israel. Now, what did the Magi do, the Gentiles who came to recognize the king of the Jews? Remember, that's why Jesus got murdered. He's the king of the Jews. Boy, the Roman Empire doesn't like that. It's nonetheless true. But the Magi came to recognize that this was a king. Now, they may or may not have understood this in the fullest sense, but they at least understood it that this was a time of great import and it had signs to go with it. Maybe we see signs today. Maybe... It's a holy war against God's holy people. Now, individually, they might not be that holy, but they are called to be holy. And we, as Christians, are obliged to protect our brothers and sisters who are Jewish, not those who are against. Because if they're against the Jews, then they're against us. And make no mistake about it. Antichrist is just that. Now, the, these three kings, like we like to say, who came to do Jesus' homage, what did they do? They prostrated themselves before him. They laid on the floor their faces in the, hopefully there was some rug or something that they were putting their face down into. But the dirt's proper. I mean, unless you prostrate yourself before Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, God, incarnate you're not worthy to be called a christian you don't become a christian by just 
you know, expecting God to save you because you say, well, I confess Jesus Christ in my mouth. No, man, you got to prostrate yourself before him. You got to lay your life down. You got it. You got to suck the dirt from which you came. You don't deserve salvation. None of us do. So what do you got to offer the King of Kings? There's nothing you can give for your life. Not a thing. And many preachers say it, but it's true. There's nothing you have that God needs. You need. I need. Everything that God has to give. So what do we give in return to a gift we can't pay for? Well, what are your gifts and talents? Do you have a bunch of gold like one of the kings did? Is that what you give to God? Do you give to God what is God's and to Caesar what is Caesar's? Do you do that? Myrrh was used to embalm the body in preparation for burial. You know you're going to die. Myrrh was expensive. What are you going to leave when you go? And to whom? Because you can't take it with you. Or frankincense. Incense, really. And the base of all incenses that we use. Frankincense is a sap of a tree. In the same way that you might be familiar with pine trees and their sap. You can burn that. It will smell like pine. Burnt pine, but it smells smell like pine. But what was that symbolic of? Our prayer rising up to God like incense. Perhaps that's the only gift that any of us can give. Is to have a fruitful, intimate, personal conversation with God. In which we receive everything. So what do we give him in return? Our love. For sure. For he loved us first. He created us out of that love. And will never stop loving us. But do we love God? Enough to give up all the things that God says not to do. Are you willing to do that? I mean, one of your gifts might be to give up the vices that you have. That would be good. But when we pray to God, we glorify God. We give him praise. Like every angel will do for eternity, and so will we. If we are so lucky, not lucky, blessed to go to heaven. What are you doing to work your way there? I submit that the, that the best and perhaps easiest way is just to pray. And you just can start simple. You know, the form of the prayer is our Father. But even heretics and pagans will pray the Our Father. How about the Hail Mary? The greeting of the Archangel Gabriel to Mary, to capture her heart. To capture her heart in such a way that, that, that she had found favor with God to be the vessel to bring salvation to the world. To which she turned around and said, let it be done unto me according to what you just said. That she trusted the most important element of love. To trust. Trust God. He will never fail you. Give to God what God deserves, which is our praise and the first fruits. 
in thanksgiving to God. And then perhaps it's the corporal works of mercy, the things that we do for others in this life. If we get that order correctly, then we don't worry about where we're going when we die. We are comforted in the knowledge that whatever we might have accumulated in this life is distributed justly, honestly, and prudently to those who remain. This has been a season of love, Christmas. It's time when we appreciate one another and offer them gifts. So the question of Epiphany is, is what gifts do you give back to God? It's your choice. Well, you do. It's your choice. But you have to choose God. You have to choose him. Or you won't be worthy. Just like you choose to marry someone. Or you have to choose to love them when they're not so lovable. You love God always and everywhere, in every situation, because God's love is perfect, and we need that love. You need it, I need it, everyone needs it, whether they know it or not. So just as we appreciate others that we love, we, shall we not appreciate God in his love for us so that we win God's affection and love by what we do in mind, in body, and spirit. In, in the spirit that we praise God and in our flesh we give glory to God. May God gift you this year with a deeper faith with a deeper understanding of him, with a deeper love for the people that you have around you that love you, and then even to love our enemies. If you get there, you know you're doing pretty well. For God loves you and he wants you to be happy. And this is a journey we are all on. And I'm here to encourage you and you encourage me when a mother says to me, my son who was not going to church came to church with me and heard you speak. And he's still going to church because of you. That was the gift I got at a funeral yesterday that I wasn't expecting to get. And I didn't even know who this woman was or who her son is. And yet my life in that way was a gift to them because my gift is to be a priest of God and one who is trying to do it to the best of my ability. I encourage you to be the best person you can be. For that is the pursuit of holiness indeed. God bless you this week and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.